the on and we'll go from there. Sheree, you got any questions? No. So we're going to, we'll do our intro after we're done with them. And we can do that by ourselves, the, the blurb. Yeah. We'll, the we'll, blooper yeah. intro. Yeah. And we'll just start um, saying the title, then introduce them. And then we'll just jump into it. All right. Well, why don't we just do the blooper on the back end? That's what I just said. And, and then we just kind of make sure that we introduce the title and all the other things. Because why does the blooper have to be programmed? Like, can't we just be natural and whatever comes out funny comes out funny? Do we have to schedule funny? Are we scheduling funny today? I'm not talking to you. See, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Behind Closed Doors with the Brooksesses. Y'all stay tuned. This one is going to be a good one. super excited to have uh our friends colleagues um co-laborers uh it, it, you know we we had a chance to coach this couple years ago and this this is an example of when you know you you start out in a business relationship and then it becomes you know friends and then it and then it evolves into family so without further ado we're excited for those of you guys who've never been to the channel welcome back i'm glenn p brooks jr i'm an author i'm a speaker I'm a coach sitting here next to the lovely light skin, magnificent and wonderful Sheree A. Brooks Jr. Why do you have to have so many adjectives, babe? Like, because I'm a mom, oh, I'm a grandma, I'm a wife, I'm a business owner. Yeah, I'm all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, here's the crazy thing. So today we're going to be talking about all of the things. So for those of you guys who are are, are concerned, and maybe I get this title wrong, what's the title today, show, babe? Can entrepreneurs have it all? Business, love, and family. And that's why we invited Team Psalms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Team Psalms. We're excited to have them in the building. Christine, Sean, if you guys can really quickly, this is a power pack uh, question, very loaded. We're going to walk through this process. You guys are building some things together. You are 27 years yes. in, in yes. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 27 so years in a row. Yeah, in a, in, a, in a row. Can y'all <laughs> tell people real quick who you are, what you do, why you do it, who you do it for? And let's set up the framework of how we're going to get down. Can entrepreneurs have it all? Can, can we do all the things? Absolutely. So, mm, I'll let you start. Please. Thank you. Um, I am Christine M. Psalms, a wife, mom, dance studio owner, uh, business uh, coach, as well as the mompreneur coach. As I said before, married to this amazing man for 27 years in a row. And I really help moms and women look figure out what it looks like to go from no time to me time, really restructuring their life. And yes, you can have it all. And that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. You got to tell the whole story. You're also a dance studio owner. Yeah, all the things. She didn't want to say all that. Yeah. She's going to do better for later. I'm a dance studio owner. We're celebrating 15 years um, this year. So we're excited about that. June 22nd is our 15th production. And um, yes, I am a dance studio owner. Um, that is my passion. And so I motivate people to strive for excellence, whether on the dance floor or in the Zoom room. I motivate them to strive for excellence and absolutely succeed at it. So that is who, yeah. that's a little bit of who I am. Also yeah. a three-time author. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, put it all in there. I, look, look, Sean, I thought <laughs> I thought else? Sheree let's had all the titles. It, I forgot no, who I was no, talking yeah, to. Yeah, you're, you're, right. you're right. Listen. You're a homeschool teacher. You're, all of the you're things. All the things. And Sheree, why are Aaron you? Aaron for her. Mother, father, <laughs> all of, listen. Why are we landed on so thick? Because Sean, no, because we're gonna talk about this, right? Can because we we're really... gonna talk about it. It's all these titles. That's yeah. that's what leads to what we're talking about today. A absolutely. And Sean, and I get ninety minutes of me time. So let me just put that right there with all the titles. Wow. So there's that. Sean, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am Sean Psalms. Uh, I am a Bible-based financier. Uh, and a state planner. I teach financial literacy to all those who want to understand how money really works. Um, I have a desire to empower the people, all people, to understand how to have a retirement for their future and follow biblical principles. 
uh, transferring money down from generation to generation. Um, I, I'm enjoyed to look upon this gorgeous <laughs> Ephesus every single day. Working with her 24 hours a day is absolutely my pleasure. We're going to tell y'all a story about that later on, but I'll leave it right there. I love it. I love it. Cherie, set it up. Today, we're going to be talking about some things. And I really want all of my couples who are building together, whether you are an entrepreneur, one's nine to five, the other's full time, maybe you guys are climbing the corporate ladder, but you're trying to balance all the balls and figure out, can you make it work? Come on, Sheree, let's talk. Right. And one of the biggest challenges that couples have is trying to juggle all of the things. And you guys are a prime example of that. So the part we didn't really touch on was your children. And so you guys have four children, you have three adult children, and you have one still in the home. So with all of with all of you, both of you running your own businesses and having children at different stages of life, how do you pr- prioritize your time between work and family? And can you share a specific strategy that you use to help maintain this balance? He taught me time management. So yeah. I'm going to defer to the professional. I I did. I had to teach and train Sean on what time management looks like. And that kind of answers the question Mm -hmm. is that that was the only way that we were able to balance, or I like to say, harmonize it all. The home life, the business life, um, and then our own relationship is making sure that we harmonize it together. There, there was a time um, where that wasn't an issue. There, um, the word was an issue. It was a challenge where we could not figure out how to make it work. Um, At the time I was working a nine to five, running a dance studio part-time, raising four children, um, being a wife to him and trying to run a household. And it was literally almost killed our marriage because I spent 12 plus hours at the the job where I worked. My kids uh, attended the same school that I worked at. And so it was literally that time where we were two ships passing in the night because we did not prioritize each other. Mm -hmm. We did not prioritize our family. It was about not just making ends meet, but it was about just surviving. And because we were those two ships passing in the night, it almost destroyed our marriage. We didn't go to divorce court. We didn't hire attorneys. We weren't separated physically, but we were in the same home, but we were still separate, if you will until we made a decision to figure out what comes first. And that's both of us to make that decision, not just one. And to empathize and take the time out from where we were in our perspectives to get into the other's perspective, see things through their eyesight. And that was uh, illuminating, especially for me as a man. You know, uh, uh, I never seen a household that ran and they prioritized themselves as well as their families. So we've never seen the success that we wish for and that we wanted. Yeah. So since we didn't see it, guess what? We had to fabricate it ourselves. We manufactured it. And again, as you know, as being a Bible-based uh, financial advisor, I we do everything through the Bible. So when we find out we're not seated in the Bible in our relationship, guess what it's time to do? open that book up, crack the principles, apply them, and actually see the deliverance. And here we are today. That's good. good. I have a quick question. As you talked about, you know, there was a season when you guys weren't prioritizing. Were there signs or things? What made you recognize or realize, okay, we're, for lack of better terms, drifting apart. There's not, this cohesion isn't here. What were some, I guess, red flags you could point out to people if they noticed this in their relationship? It may mean you need to come together closer and prioritize your relationship. Yeah. So for, for me, one of the signs was actually from my children. When my children started calling me Mrs. Songs by my last name and no longer called me mom or mommy because I worked at the school. Like I said, that they attended, they only knew me as that um, for a time period because that's who other children, that's who other people called me. And when they started calling me that in the home, I was like, hold on, something's off here. The other part was when you as a, as a couple, when you just give pecks on the cheek or the, the lips and you're okay with that, or you don't get anything at all, in, any intimacy, and you're okay with that. That is a sign. And when I say okay with that, you, you've, you've made so many excuses as to why you only get the peck, why you only get the, the duty sex. And I know, you know, I'm just going to go out there and put it out there as for women. And so when you realize that that's just what it is, it's not love. 
It's not enjoyment and it becomes duty. That Those are, are key signs, especially for women to say, hey, hold on, let me stop here. And it's about being self-aware and it's not about passing the buck. And I just want to emphasize that, that oftentimes we as women, and I can only speak from a woman's perspective or as a wife's perspective, is that we will oftentimes pass the buck and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the laundry, I'm cooking dinner, I'm cleaning the house, I'm raising the children, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. So of course I'm going to be tired. Of course I'm not going to have time for my husband. Of course I'm, and you're making these excuses. If you are, if you have checked any of those boxes, whether it was just one, then that's an indication that that your marriage is in trouble. You can fight me on that one. I promise you I'll win. (laughs) No, I love that. And I like when, especially when you talk to women, and I think oftentimes we as women will pile on the list. Well, I do this, I do this. But part of your obligation as a wife is if I see that there's some distance, I need to initiate that. I need to make that connection. I can't put all that onus on him to make the connection. Yeah. I can't just keep using the excuse. I'm tired. I have to also make time for him. That's just like that. I do with the kids. Cause that's one thing I hear often with couples, especially with small kids. The husband's complaint is that, well, she gives all her time to the kids. Mm-hmm. You're married. You're a wife first. You have to make time for your husband. Mm-hmm. For those so. of you guys that are just pulling up, <laughs> welcome to another edition of behind closed doors. It's going to get hot in here. You understand me? (laughs) We we got team Psalms in the building. We're talking about can entrepreneurs have it all business, love and family. Uh, Christine, you resoundingly said, absolutely. You can. When I thought about that question, Sheree posed the title, you know, I said, for me, it's yes. And, or, or yes and no, or it's yes with a caveat. And I think that oftentimes, and and, and I want to kind of switch gears a little bit, it really involves the kind of support systems that you have in the relationship. Um, I think everybody desires to have everything, but I think unfortunately what we most of us do is we try to have everything all at the same time right now in this season, and this becomes that whole juggling act. So many people may not know this, but you guys, as much as you all are involved in each other's businesses, You actually have two completely separate business with two separate outcomes, two separate staffs, teams, the whole nine yards. Sean, and and, and I want both of you guys to kind of talk and speak to this. But when it comes to running a business, um, how do you guys support each other's entrepreneurial endeavors like y'all's dreams? Um, And I know, obviously, we've had a chance to coach and work with you guys. Y'all do it better than most. And and I've watched you and and I admire you guys. Like, can y'all share a little bit about how is it that you actually take the time to support the other one with all the things that you got going on yourselves? Anybody? Super good. And not trying to get super duper deep with a one word uh, phrase or one word throw out. But first, we had to learn how to communicate. I had to learn how she hears, how she um, understands. Because I have my vision and trying to convey it in words and in the right words to speak for her to understand it. That's a whole art within itself. So being married for 27 years, I had to take that time to want to learn her and how she um, how she understands. Um, And as we explain, as I explain to her what's going on, what my challenges are, um, what my triumphs are, what my goals are. I also have to weigh in there how this weighs on her in all that she's doing um, with the family, with even herself. Some So often we forget. And that's just a gift that I've, I've, uh, I'll tell people God has given me the gift of empathy because I ask for it. I ask God to give me the gift of empathy so I can understand what other people are going through when I'm trying to add something to them or ask for something from them. And so I'm very careful with that balance to find out where she is and what it is I want. Well, that's a word right there. No, nah, that's good, Sean. Yeah. And sure. and that that's that's basically where it is. So that communication is yeah. was key first mm-hmm. before I can start to express to her what it is I needed, what it is I wanted, where I wanted to go, and where she is in in the midst of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sean, one of the things, and I'm going to throw it to you, Christine, that I love about what you said is that you asked for the empathy. I think that naturally, in a lot of ways, human beings are selfish by nature. Like we come out the womb crying, me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. And we all know kids and we're going to talk about our our kids. We're going to clean it up and not go with the earthquake version. (laughs) Uh, But we listen. They are takers. Yes. And yep. if you uh-huh. don't prioritize you, if you don't uh, try and figure out how to get um, yourself in other people's shoes, you'll miss them. Christine, talk to me a little bit about how do you support this guy? Uh, he's got a lot going on. We've had a chance to sit in some of even y'all's financial stuff. And I've watched you like support mm-hmm. this cat. And nobody in the room would have known that you have all the things going on that you do quite frankly, yeah. separate and apart from him. Come on, talk to us. Absolutely. And I'm going to pick it back off of what Sean said. It was communication, but the part of communication is the actual learning how to listen mm-hmm. um, to him and listen to what he's doing, understanding. And so in order for us to actually work together and make it work, I had to understand his business. True. Um, I'm not a biz- I, I'm, I can't go in there until you get your finances straight. I'm the last person. However, I do understand what um, what his vision is. I often say that you don't have to be married to someone else's vision, but you have to at least understand it to support it. Correct. And so that's why I had to sit at his feet to yes. understand the vision, to understand the call that he's been commissioned to do. And so once I was able to listen and not listen with this, you know, like viewpoint, like, mm, let me see what this is about, but listen to like, let me just learn. Let me just learn. And yes, I challenge him with certain questions. And especially when he's talked about people's finance, people are very private with their finances. And so I had to ask him, well, how are you educating them so that they feel free enough and comfortable enough? And so he had to educate me. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was about in order for me to support that vision, not married to it, because I have to be married to what God has given me but being able to support and understand that vision. So that's how that's been able to work for us. I, I, I love that, Christine. And I think that's one thing that a lot of couples have a challenge with. If mm-hmm. I'm not involved in what you do, and I'll even put this to you, you could work two nine to fives. Yeah. For me to support you in what you do, I need to at least understand what you do. No, I'm not going to come on your job and do your job. Right. But I can't fully support you in what it is that you're doing in your career if I don't show an interest and wanting to know what it is that you do. And I think that's the bigger thing. People are like, well, I do this and he do this. He just go to his job. I go to my job. Okay. Yeah. But that job, especially Mm -hmm. if it's something that's going to take you outside the home, if it's going to be demanding of your time, you would want to have some understanding of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to get a degree in what they're doing. You don't have to, like you said, you don't have to be bought in or, you know, completely committed to that thing. But I think that that is a great, it's a help when yeah. it comes to dealing with somebody and being able to support them in their dreams is having a true understanding of what it is, not just surface. Oh, right. I want to go make a million dollars. Okay. All right. You go do that. No. What exactly is it that you're doing? Okay. How is it that you're doing? What is it? You know, what is the outcome you're looking for? How are you going to achieve this? Being curious as the other spouse in what it is that your partner is doing so that you're knowledgeable enough that you can support them. Cause that could be simply, well, you need me help send out some emails for you. Um, like for me, when Glenn started out in the business, you know, I was working for social services, but there were things that as he was doing it, I realized, okay, well, I, I don't want to do what you're doing, <laughs> but there are things I can do to add to what you're doing. Like I can do back end stuff for you because that's my area, but I didn't have to become a part of the business. I eventually right. did, but Absolutely. that was by choice, right. but it wasn't, you know, but I had to support him and what he was doing first, because there would have been no dream fulfilled if he hadn't gone first. So real quick, and I want to jump in because for those people who might be just pulling up y'all, we're talking um, to team Psalms, Christine and Sean Psalms about can entrepreneurs have it all business, love and family. And Sheree, you mentioned a word that I think that all too often in relationships uh, either fade or was never there. And that's a level of curiosity about the person that they're in relationship with. Mm-hmm. And Sean, one of the things that I notice on a regular basis is that there's this constant curiosity that you have. 
You are a question asker. You do not assume much. You often will see things and it quite frankly can get on other people's nerves because it is so meticulous in a lot of ways. But one of the things that I'm going to caution people to understand is that it's that level of curiosity that causes you to stay connected Yes, because you're always wondering. And I think that, and that's a question for the audience. If you guys um, can relate, put me in the chat, like you've lost your curiosity or uh, the other person has lost their curiosity in you. You ain't got to give me the details, but put me, I get it. Give me a thumbs up, put that in the chat. And uh, I'm telling you, that is absolutely um, something that I think that we need to recapture. Yes. Yes. So I want to talk about your kids, talk about the children. So how do you get them involved in your entrepreneurial journey and are there specific roles that they've come into the business or that they assist with? How how do you get their buy-in? How have you got their buy-in and what it is that you guys do? So mine is more of a teaching. Mm -hmm. I have a saying, before protecting others' borders, get your own house in order. Mm. So when it comes to finances, and how I'm helping people manage money, understand money, um, products, instruments, taxes, um, income, increase, all that stuff. I need to start with mine first. I'm a pastor. I'm a priest of my home first, first and foremost. So teaching, sitting down with my children, un letting them understand what it is dad does, how dad does it, and how this will also apply to you. Because uh, uh, was it Proverbs thirteen twenty two? A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. I need to make sure you can take this and make sure it's still around for my grandchildren mm -hmm. who are non-existent right now. So Christine has a saying: If it's not taught, it's caught. Mm -hmm. And we move with well, especially in my business, I move with both arms. I'm going to teach you, and you're going to hear me and see what I do. So you're going to understand it that way. So that's how I've involved my children into. And I've also had them um, have their friends sit down yeah. with me. There's 10 words. And I say this in my presentation. I get from my clients all the time. If I had a nickel for every time it was said to me, I would have over $600 million. And these are the 10 words. I wish someone had taught me money in my 20s. Wow. I get it all the time. Wow. So my children are protected. Yeah. And now since they're protected, I can reach out to others. You know, that is critical because I think that that part, and I know you guys well enough to know, uh, for those that don't know, these two here bravely jumped out when it was not popular and uh, homeschooled all four of their kids. And there was a season where all of them we're being homeschooled simultaneously. They're obviously different ages, but yeah. the teaching part is critical, particularly at young ages when they understand fundamentally what you guys do. And Sean, you said something I think is critical, and that is how does it apply to you? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times kids don't necessarily connect the dots. Yeah, you do a thing, but that don't really apply yeah. to me because you're just dad. It's like, oh, uh, but it does. And, and I need to teach you that. Christine, talk to us because <laughs> Every one of your kids is incredibly creative. <laughs> They're talented. You run a dance studio. You have a daughter who is an artist when it comes to, I mean, your sons, are, are they, are, if it's film, if it's, oh, what, it's all of the things. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah, yeah. it hard getting them bought into what it is that you do or did that come naturally? It came naturally because, well, once we got over our, you know, our, our, our challenge of trying to stay connected, when we decided to homeschool, mm -hmm. it did something amazing for our family. It did. It connected us on a different level. Um, I encourage anybody. And like I said, fight me earlier, fight me too. I, I promise you I'll win on this one. I am a huge advocate for homeschooling. Whether you are a nine to five or you have your own business, you can still homeschool because the benefits are far reaching and they are still reaching. My, our oldest is 25 and the benefits of him being homeschooled, um, even for the last three years of his academic career um, before he went off to college. Um, was just, and yes, he went to college as a homeschooler mm -hmm. as well. Um, and yes, our, our daughter went to college as a homeschooler. So I say that to say that it's far reaching. 
but what the 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 how they got bought in or how they was like I'm all in mom and dad is because we went on the premise of building legacy. Yep. And I want to pause there for a moment and talk about legacy as a family. Oftentimes parents we have children but we don't think about our legacy. We think about oh we got these cute babies and you know all these cute toddlers, the terrible twos and the to- and the tweens and the and all of that, and yep, I can't wait till I'm an empty, empty nester, all of those things. Mm-hmm. But what happens after you're gone? That part. What happens when the grandkids come, when the great greats come? Is there a legacy for your family? And so something that that I have with the studio is that we I am building legacy. Um, yes, my daughters, my two daughters and uh, our two daughters and, and our youngest son, they the three of them dance. Our oldest son did not choose to dance. However, he is on the music side. Um, He's a music producer. He gets that from his father. And so it's still about building legacy. He is the studio's music producer. So whenever we need some music, you know, connections or compilations created, he is our go to. He is our official music producer. So but it's about building legacy. So when I retire, when the Lord says it's time for me to retire, our oldest daughter has already said, this is what I want. It's not something I say, you got to have, this is what you're going to do. I left it up to her, but she understands that we are building a legacy. And so when you come into that, whether you have a nine to five or not, when you decide as a couple that you want to create legacy and, 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 and foster it and nurture it and build it for your family, and then you teach that to your children, that's what you want to create. That's how they get buy-in. Whether you work for the government for 30 plus years and you like, I'm creating this for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's how we did it. And that's how they are bought in. And that's, that's why they stay connected to the, to us in that way. I love it. I love it. I I think that, um, you know, that just begs. And and I know there are people sitting there saying, wait a minute, how in the world did you get them to really go along? And is this real? Can it be, can it be true? And, And I'm here to say, it is real and it's realer than most people imagine in that it's happening to more and more people um, as, as, as our society grows, particularly with technology and things like that. These kids are incredibly talented. And, and when you give them opportunity and you show them how it connects the dots to their own lives and how they can. When I think about Lena and I think about her coming to you and saying, no, I want to take over this. Not only was she groomed, but she had a part in building it. Absolutely. That's right. So that, yeah. That's the thing I need. Yeah. Of yeah. course, she'll come back and say, yeah. you know, I want to. She was a product of the school. Mm-hmm. She became talented enough and skilled enough to be able to teach kids while there as a student. Yeah. She then became uh, a person that went on to the Alvin Ailey School of Dance and a whole bit. And, and she's there now. So it's a it's it's a natural that she would because she helped to build those. Those are her babies, too, in some regard. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I, I, I think, Cherie, and, and I know we want to go to the next thing. But can you talk a little bit about because those are principles that you deal with in terms of family first in, 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 in the book that you wrote? How important is that to get that buy in? Right. It's, it's, it's critical that you get buy in from your family, from your spouse, as well as for your children. Because the mistake, and we made this mistake, you know, early on in our marriage, when Glenn went into ministry, we were in agreement, but we didn't get full buy-in from our kids. Mm -hmm. And they went along, but they were not bought in. And so we got to see what happens when you don't get that buy-in, when you don't bring them along. You know, we did to them what, you know, many of our parents did, you know, you just drag your kids along, Mm -hmm. you know, and there were repercussions from that. And so, you know, we've been able to repair the damage and we're, you know, our relationships are solid now, but it did not turn out the way that your, your, your relationship with your children had, because you guys had the insight from the beginning to bring them in. And so for those of you that are parents and you may already be in business and you've been doing this thing already, it's not too late. Mm-hmm. to bring them in, to let them know what it is that you do, bring them in. And now they may be older and they may not really be that interested, but as much as they're curious about it, if they pose questions, be willing to give them that the, the answers to the questions, mm-hmm. bring them in. Because yeah. with buy-in, that's how you can develop legacy. Because you know, you'll hear about these mega millionaires that will have these organizations that they've built and their kids don't want to have nothing to do with it. 
A lot of that is because they never brought their kids into it. So, of course, they want to go off and do their own thing. But if you can help them to feel like they're a part of it, like they, you know, this is theirs all along, that then you'll get have that buy-in. And also, it'll also give you some grace that in part. those seasons when you do have to grind in the business. There's an understanding that they have that this is for a season. Like right now, you're in your production season, so you're doing extra hours. There's a level of grace that you get with them because they know, okay, this is mom's season. We're going to give her room to do this. So they're going to extend you grace. But if they're not bought in, then they're just going to be continue to be the the, the leechers that children are. <laughs> and they're going to want all your time, but there's not going to be any empathy. As yeah. Sean said, they don't won't develop that level of empathy for what you're doing because they don't understand it. Christine, you look like you chomping at the. Yeah, bed. I just mm-hmm. wanted to add that we are not perfect. Our family is not perfect. Speak for yourself. We are. Okay. We are amazing. Though. <laughs> I, I, I will say that we are. We are. Yeah. Amazing. Family, but we are. We can get to that part. We can get to that part. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to add that that there was a time. And I'll give you an example, a really quick example. There was a time when Christina was six, seven years old, and we have two shows per um, oh, per yeah. day in our production. And she had done one show. Now at that time, you know, I am director Psalms when I'm backstage, and that's how you know they refer to me and what have you. And we had done the first, the 1 p.m. show. We were taking a break. The kids were napping and eating and getting ready for the 7 p.m. show. And she came up to me and she said, Mommy, I'm done. And I said, oh. She sure did. You're done eating? No, no, no. I'm done. I don't want to dance anymore. <laughs> and I looked at her. I said, well, we got one more show to do. She did amazing in the first show. I'm mm-hmm. thinking. Incredible. Um, and she said, I'm done. And I had to pause and get out of director Psalms mode yep. and go back into mommy mode. I had to take the director hat off and put the mommy hat on. And I had to hear my child. Right. I had to hear her heart. And I'm, sa- I'm telling you, then she sat on dad's lap for yep. the second show. Yeah. <laughs> and I told her instructor, you know, we do the spacing because she's not in it. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yes, ma'am. And we made it work. But and she took a break for maybe three or four years. She went into retirement, yo. <laughs> At the age of six, right? At the age of six. Took up piano and played soccer and, you know, played the flute. But my point is, it's because I allowed her to, to breathe yeah. and to share. But we had to create that space where she that felt comfortable too. enough to say, hey, mommy, I can't do this anymore mm-hmm. right now. And then she's back, an amazing dancer. We'll be in this. Yeah. This, you know, stronger than ever, taking four classes a week, five classes a week. But I say to say that I don't want people to like, oh, my gosh, you're just perfect. It can't be done. It can be done. But you still have to allow the space yeah. for those type of bumps. And in, 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 I call them learning moments to happen in your mm-hmm. in your family. I love that. Well, that's a great that. segue into and Sean, maybe you can jump in and give us another example but it's not perfect. And I don't want to paint the picture like this stuff happens automatically. You guys have bumped y'all's heads and you have gone through your uh, series of challenges. Can you guys give, can you give us just another challenge that maybe you guys had and and maybe what was the solution? How did y'all navigate that? Whether it's with the kids or just how you guys come together. (laughs) It was was so funny. I was actually telling somebody about this. I said, we were married. I think we were with Savon. I think you were pregnant with Savon. Okay. And we were on a cruise ship. Uh, And you are not used to spending 24 hours a day with your spouse. Not until the pandemic, but this was before the pandemic. (laughs) And we were on a cruise ship and we were having a good time. We had like five other spouses with us. And each night, each spouse got into an argument. Every single one of them until it came to us. And we got into an argument I don't know. I wanted to do something because I'm I'm full flamingo. She's total turtle. And she didn't want to have the fun I wanted to have. I felt like she was holding me back. She felt like I was doing too much. Y'all, when I tell y'all the ship wasn't big enough to get away from her, it's like being in a high school with your girlfriend and y'all married each other and y'all see each other walking down the hallway. Yeah, I take the same class. We walk past each other and didn't even acknowledge each other. And oh, God. Yeah. You know, so yeah, we don't have the perfect, but we again, we had to learn each other and how to not be over the top for her, how for her not to 
hold me too far down because a balloon is supposed to go up, but it ain't supposed to go into the atmosphere. So, yeah, so it it took that type of balance. And that was in the beginnings. And those beginnings taught us where we are now, how to balance each other before we can balance them. Yeah. I can always tell by what he's going to wear that day, what I can expect. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you all know. Y'all see Sean dress. Right. We can like, take, okay. I can tell what's up. He got the white shoes on. Watch the yep. heck. Out. Yep. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And it's winter. You understand me? Like well, y'all lucky I ain't got my toupee fitted yet. You lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can wrap this up, I, I know that you guys and Sri, you know, we have uh not one in some of these areas Mm -hmm. and hanging out with folks like them shows us, you know, what winning can look like. And you Mm -hmm. said it earlier, it's not too late to make the adjustment. I think one of the greatest gifts we can give our children is the gift of change. Mm -hmm. And that is that they get to watch in their lifetime, their parents evolve. They admit to the mistakes that they've made. And obviously you can't go back and repair what's already done, but that you, 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 there's a metamorphosis that takes place. And I think that you guys give people hope that, you know what, it is, I didn't get that together. I didn't do that, that, but we can work that out. Let's talk about traditions and some things that we're doing with the Mm -hmm. families too. And y'all talked a lot about legacy. Um, Y'all got some things that y'all do on a regular basis that um, makes other couples envious a little bit. Uh, but sometimes just, just a little teeny, uh, you know, what are some family traditions yeah, um, just, or activities to help you guys connect and exactly. unwind together as a family? Talk to us. Oh, so for Christmas, um, again, it's, I have a desire for truth and that was true, but truth. And I searched for it diligently. So for Christmas, um, my children and I, we don't just buy them gifts. They've never, ever believed in Santa Claus. Ain't no, ain't no man getting no, none of our credit. Oh, no. <laughs> they don't believe in Valentine's Day. They don't believe in the Easter Bunny, none of that stuff. So for Christmas, what I did was I, uh, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, I have a banner. I had a banner printed up and I put it over top of the tree and it says, The true meaning of Christmas is how God gave the world a gift it never deserved, but needed more than anything. To accept the gift is to accept the responsibility of being such a gift to the world. So before our children open up their gifts, we tell them that this is the excitement you have in opening this gift is the excitement that people should have with you presenting the the light of Christ mm-hmm. to others every single Christmas. So it's going to go from tradition to tradition all the way down. So they know the real me. They don't have the entitlement. None of our children have that entitlement. Oh, yeah. They I understand it. it comes at a price. I love it. I love it. Christine, you got anything? I'm trying to think. Do we have, uh, it's, nothing's coming to me. I know one of the things that I've seen. You guys go on family vacation. Listen, that's that's oh, what yeah. I was Oh, I, that's, yeah, I guess, that's what I was yeah. And it's yeah, not I, necessarily, I mean. No, 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 it's serious. Oh, that's what, it's, it's real. Y'all, how y'all serious it is. Y'all ain't playing with y'all stuff. I, no. my mother and my four brothers, we never, ever yeah. went on a vacation. I didn't go on a vacation, never saw the beach until so, yeah, I dated yeah. Christine. And we were the opposite. We went to the beach every single summer as a family. And so when we had that conversation, I said, sir, I need to find some water and some sand and we need to get there. And so that is a tradition that we do as a family. I don't look at it. I guess it's a tradition. It's just something that we do all the time. It's a part of our life. Um, In fact, we'll be headed to Myrtle Beach um, in July as an entire family um, that we've incorporated um, my, my brothers and his family, his children. Um, and my youngest brother and we all get together. Um, and it's important to us to to be connected. Um, we've done um, <laughs> down there. We have children, one in Florida, one in New York, and one in Virginia now, and then one here. We do Zooms together mm. or FaceTimes, if you will. Um, and Sean has a 75 inch screen in yeah. downstairs. And so he just we plaster them on the screen and we sit in the sofa. Talk and laugh, yeah. Joke. Yeah. And we, you know, so those are things that um that we do, um, whether they're small or or big. Um, we've gone to Disney too many times, not ever going again. Same <laughs> <time>. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's those things that we do, but not, not only just going away, but making sure that we check in with each other. That is something that we do. Um, we have a family tax and, you know, they send we each other. I don't do the memes because anyway, they do the funny memes and I laugh at what they send and what have you. And, but we do that because it's important that we stay connected. Yeah. Um, Psalm's family is growing since Savon got married, um, but we're small. We're a small nucleus, but we are a powerful family um, that won't be stopped. And, and so, and if I may to to tag on to what she's saying, we and this is a beauty. This is a beautiful thing. We are now the family we always wished we had when we yeah. were younger. Absolutely. We we thought. I mean, we saw yeah. people who were people swear we are filthy rich. We are. We're wealthy. We are wealthy because our love yes. and people see it. It yeah. resonates so much because we didn't have it. So we made ourselves mm-hmm. that. And you can too, now that you're aware. And we think we thank God for the um we thank God so much for the Glenn, uh Glenn and Sheree, yeah. the Brookses, and seeing that also, because it's a beautiful perspective of the left eye, right eye perspective making one vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glenn and Cherie, you guys have it where, like you said, you did things incorrect and then you corrected them. Mm-hmm. With us, you have us. We didn't have we didn't do it incorrectly. We did it correct the first time. You need both those perspectives yeah. in order to make your vision, because I prefer all the variables. Give it yeah. to me. It's better for me to have it and not need it than yeah. to need it and not have it. Yeah. Well, you are you. You guys are the the the, the Huxtables of twenty twenty four. We'll take it. We'll take it as long as long as Denise don't get pregnant. As long as Denise don't get pregnant. Oh, right. Right. right, 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 right. Listen, <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. I appreciate you guys for pulling up. I know we went a little bit long in this episode, but I need you guys to know that it is possible for you to have it all. But it's impossible to do that without you doing it intentionally, building it, having structure, having uh, systems and and communicating and doing all the things, you know, that 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 is what solidifies that. Sure. You got anything before we want to roll? No, I'm just great. I'm I'm glad that we were able to have our great friends here today. Um, Appreciate you guys adding value to our community. Um, As always, love you guys. And can't wait to see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you for forming the community, that part right yeah. there, for building the structure. Because yeah. people always just look to live in. And they, it's, it's, I'm going to tell you this real quick. Um, every day I wake up, I walk around my house, even into the bathroom, even into the closet. And I thank God that it's there. Mm-hmm. I don't overlook it or just use it. I identify it. So I say that again to you, uh, to the Brookses. Thank you guys for building, for uh, backhoeing the ground and making it level, pouring the foundation, building the structures and opening it for people to reside in and be a community. I appreciate that highly. And we're talking about the MAPS community. If, if <laughs> the listening did I was not know. Laugh. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, Sean, perfect segue because we, when we were starting out in, in our marriage, we did not have a community that we nope. could tap into. So when we were on that verge of divorcing, and I know we're going along coach, but when we were on that verge of divorcing, if we had a community wow. that we could have dived into that could supported us through the process, it may not have taken as long, yep. right? But it was for the grace of God that we are still here as a couple. But I just want to encourage other couples who, if you're year one or year 30 or what have you, or somewhere in between, get connected to a community maps, a community that is going to give you what you need before you need it. The preventative work is the protective work. Absolutely. Boy, listen, mm-hmm. now I, I, I am humbled that you guys say that, um, you know, Sheree and I have been building the marriages and parenting successfully relationship academy for uh, oh, we're in our years. we're in our eighth year now. And um, and I honestly believe that the reason why she and I are winning as consistently as we do is directly related to the communities that we've grown our relationship through. Mm-hmm. And I think that people don't understand we've been sold a bill of goods when we subscribe to the old wives tale, the ghetto logic that says what goes on in this house stays in this house. 
And I'm going to promise you that is what's causing the fabric of our families to just unravel in ways that's just not necessary. And so if you're out and about and you come across this uh, video, this interview, and you want to learn more about the MAPS Relationship Academy, click uh, one of the links in the description below. You can jump on a free uh, discovery call. We don't let everybody in that community. Um, it is highly protected as a culture there where we um, we show up. We don't judge. We speak truth, but we do it in love. Yes. And um, and we hold each other accountable to do the things that we say that we want to do. And here's what I know to be true. At the end of the day, you can't get you can't get to any you can't get to any place of significance by yourself. <laughs> And why is that, babe? Because we all need, need some help. Some help. Y'all be help good. Me. Help, help, help me. me. Help. help me. Help me. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> help, listen. Me. help me help, help you. Me. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all be good. We'll see you guys back on the next edition of Behind Closed Doors. Team Psalms, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Y'all be good. And we'll talk to you guys next week.